Hey guys, thanks for tuning into Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, please, and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on great interviews. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, it takes just a second. I've got some big ones coming up. I've got Bones. Uh, he's drummed for, I mean, uh, he's drummed with Chester Bennington, the late Chester Bennington. Uh, he's been on the David Letterman Show, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Um, I also have a surprise coming up. One of the best guitarists in the world. I think uh, he he was very much part of helping White Snake break out, other than David Coverdale. Uh, is it John Sykes? Is it Adrian Vandenberg? Or is it Steve Vai? So stay tuned. Please hit the subscribe button. And now I'm going to bring on my guest of the Winery Dogs, Mr. Richie Cotson. How are you doing, Richie? I'm great. How are you? I'm a million bucks shy of being a millionaire. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to thank Amanda Kagan from uh, ABC Public Relations for setting this up. Thanks, Amanda. Um, you're releasing on the 3rd of February, just a couple days away, Winery Dogs 3. Um, I just have to ask you, did you guys record that remotely or was that something you did uh, in studio face-to-face? Face-to-face. The way this band works creatively is such that we need to be in a room together. And the process is really uh, pretty pretty simple. Um, we set up a few microphones and we'll start sharing ideas and playing and we record everything. And then at some point we'll go back and, and check out what we've done and start to organize it. And we will take uh, a track and, and, and actually arrange it and, and commit to the arrangement before there's even lyrics or, or melodies written. And then at that point, typically I'll live with that for however long it takes and, you know, solidify what it is that I'm going to sing both melodically and lyrically. And that's really how, how, how the record comes together. So we got together, I believe it was the summer 2021 wow. at my place and we recorded whatever we recorded. And then we got together again a month later. The guys flew out to Southern California, and we and we did it again. And then at that point, I started formulating and thinking about what it was that I wanted to sing and what I wanted to sing about. Mm -hmm. And that's really that was the process. And and so here we are now with the record coming out in a few days. Awesome! Looking forward to it. Um, I've listened to it and. Um... Xanadu and uh, Mad World have been released uh, already, so um, everybody just stay uh, stick around till the end of the video because um, at the end I've got uh, just a small clip of Xanadu. But my favorite two songs on the album uh, are "Stars" and "The Vengeance." Uh, do you have a particular favorite uh, for uh, lyrics or for melody, or is it just they're you know they're all your babies? Yeah, right. Um, well, yeah, yeah, they are. They're all our our babies, of course. Um, the Vengeance connects with me lyrically, of course, probably for the same reasons it, it does with you. Um, so I'm glad you picked that one out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's hard to uh, it's hard to say, oh, that's my favorite one, because yeah. they all represent something a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that what I do like about all of it is that we, we put out a 10-song record where I think each song has its own personality and its own uniqueness, where so many times... You know, there are records made that, you know, it's like, okay, well, that song kind of reminds me of the song that I just listened to. So um, I don't think we have any of that going on, thankfully. No. So no. I'm happy with all of them. I feel good about the whole thing. Yeah, no, it's 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 it's, it's awesome. Um, obviously, there was a, um, uh, a time lag between the two albums. And, um, you know, it's obviously because uh, you're busy with your solo um, um, career. And then, obviously, Billy and Mike... Uh, well, with Sons of Apollo and stuff. So that's primarily, I would assume, the reason why there's a big, um, you know, six, seven year uh, um, delay between uh, albums. Well, you know, the delay is interesting. It, if you really look at what we were doing in that time span, hmm. um, and I'll, I'll run through it. Uh, the record came out in 2015, Hot Streak. That was our second album. Yeah. We toured all the way into 2017. Oh. And that ended in Chile, I believe, when we filmed the show that became a live DVD that was Love released. It. 
And so it was really only two years that passed until we toured again in 2019. And we did a month or so of dates in North America. And after that tour, it was our plan to get together and make a third album. Um, we didn't book the studio or anything, but we were talking about, yeah, let's do another album sooner than later. And then, of course, you know, the pandemic hit, we got derailed, and then we couldn't get together until 2021. Right. But under different circumstances, this record would have uh, come to fruition sooner. But in the end, I think, you know, you look for the silver lining. And, and I, I, I believe that by being a part as long as we were, once we finally did get to it, I think that there was a, a, a real spark there yeah. that led us to make a, a a record that's really significant for us and the best record that we could have made as a third album. Right. Um, I know sales are through the roof for the pre-orders, so um, everybody watching, I mean, you've got to get uh, your hands on it. So where can they get it on the third other than Spotify and, you know? Well, I don't know. I haven't I haven't bought a physical uh, album in a, a, an insane, insanely long amount of time. So right. if I was going to buy, I buy everything on Amazon. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That 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 truck that truck is at our house three times a week. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. If I was going to buy it, I would buy it on Amazon. Uh, but you know, for the, I don't for the know. people that want to, um, you know, uh, purchase it online. There's platforms. Yeah, of course. And they can go to the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not going to be difficult. It's certainly not going to be difficult. Okay. Um, Got a couple of questions to ask you uh, history related. And so, um, so. Uh, what had happened was Eddie, that part is true, contacted me and said, hey, are you interested in talking to Billy and Mike? They're looking to form a power trio. And so that's where they came to my house and we got together and and started throwing ideas around. And um, that's how the winery dogs were created. So they um, moving forward. Mr. Big is uh, returning to some touring next year, obviously you've heard. Um, is there a chance, um, and I, you know, it's just a question, that um, you may be approached to jump on stage at some point, because the original band was with Paul, right? Um, at some point, or has there been any chatter that uh, you might be part of that? No, I, I'm, I'm not really following... Uh that so much i um i uh obviously was in the band and it was a, a, a really great time in my life but you know there's was talk years ago about them doing uh something and then it it, it never happened and now i'm hearing uh that they're doing something again I, I haven't really discussed anything with billy but um i think it'll be great for them to got go out there i mean especially with the original lineup i mean there's so many great songs that they've created together and it's a it's a very powerful group you know with billy and and paul mm -hmm. so uh i'll i'll i don't I, I doubt that i'll participate in the concert but i'll certainly go watch them play wow well i mean you were very much part of it one of my favorite songs is shine and what and actually oh thanks I've got uh, so many friends on Facebook that are fans of, you know, Eric's and Mr. Big, and a lot of them, I mean, aside from To Be With You, which, you know, broke the band wide open, Shine really comes in a close second in a lot of circles. That's a great song, man. I, I actually saw you doing it with the, the Winery Dogs, and it's just an amazing song, and uh, people might not be aware, but you wrote that, and, and your voice yeah, as well. that so, I mean, song was one that we used for... Um... Uh, one of the singles when the record was uh, was done, um, I, I had the song 90% finished, and I remember the record producer at the time, you know, felt that we, we didn't have a first single, and so he was asking me and everybody else, hey, you guys have any songs, you know, sitting around? And <clears throat> I played Shine for Richie Zito, and uh, <clears throat> it was about 90% done and 
he said, hey, we got to finish it. He said, I think this would be the right song for this band. And so Richie actually helped me finish it. And uh, it was really the verses, I think, that I, I had never completed. So he and I sat down and, and kind of figured it out. And uh, we actually played that song on the first Winery Dogs tour because, uh, you know, obviously coming off a first album, you know, sometimes you got to play longer than, than what you've recorded on your album. So right. that was part of the set in the very early days. Right. Uh, yeah, that's a great. And speaking of um, your musical abilities, singing obviously is, uh, you know, one of your great uh, uh, talents, but guitar playing is, you know, you're amazing. And, and I've, and I've watched your playing and a lot of it's, in my opinion, I see a lot of thumbing and, and picking and not, a, or excuse me, a thumbing and um, just, I mean, you're doing solos at speeds where people are using picks and you're doing them with just pick plucking strings. Um, where, how did you develop that kind of a style? And am I accurate in my assessment? Um, you know, I, I, I kind of, I, I always uh, would do both. You know, I play with the pick and the fingers. Um, and, you know, look, I'm not the only guitar player that, that does it, but yeah. something kind of funny happened on a tour many years ago, and I was on stage, and I, I didn't really um, I didn't really feel like I was playing very well. I wasn't very inspired. And so I, um, I decided, you know, well, I, I realized I'm not going to get any better practicing in my hotel room in one evening before the next show, or one afternoon, rather. So I decided to try to play one of these gigs without a guitar pick. And wow. obviously a huge part of my repertoire went out the window <laughs> and it forced me to kind of reconnect with the instrument and, and basically calm down and slow down and all that sort of thing. And so after I did that show, my manager was with me at the time and he was super excited. He said, Oh man, that was the best I've ever heard you. Wow. <laughs> He said, you, you got to do that all the time. And so I, I said, well, I'll give it a go. And um, so you know, I kept at it. And what was kind of interesting is that over the course of time, I realized, well, I want to bring back some of these other elements to my playing that, you know, I, I, I abandoned by getting rid of a guitar pick. So mm -hmm. I went back and kind of re, re, re-fingered, no pun intended, how I approached like sweet picking or like trills and yeah you know i checked out some flamenco style players and and lifted a few things i, I checked I probably looked at some uh well i definitely uh, hung out with jim queskin who if you don't know who he is you can google him mm -hmm. and uh he and i got together a bunch of times and he's very famous for his three finger picking technique and he showed me a lot of stuff wow and so at that point i kind of you know was able to revise my my playing style wow um yeah i mean just just amazing stuff um now you've uh collaborated with uh iron maidens adrian smith i could not believe how great of a singer he is i mean yeah i know he's really great yeah i mean i wonder if they thought about when Br bruce left the band the first time can adrian do both like, I mean, that guy's got yeah. pipes. <laughs> well, he's going to, he's going to love hearing that. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he's got a lot going on there. Um, a lot of depth musically, uh, creatively uh, as a player, obviously, but, um, as a songwriter and a lyricist. And then as you picked up on his vocals are great. So th that was a really wonderful collaboration for me and an honor to have found myself in a position where one of my childhood favorite bands you know i'm making a record with one of the main guys in the band so that was pretty awesome uh hopefully that'll happen again um but uh you're right on point in your observation thanks man uh so i know you're busy you've got a bunch of pressers to do today so i'll let you go but before i do um i uh in the intro obviously i talked about i have a surprise legendary guitarist from white snake and you know who he is and is he is he not a a, a legend or what a absolute legend and uh a bit of a wine connoisseur if i'm not mistaken <laughs> yeah he does like his wine just like jeff tate likes his wine 
Hey, we all, I mean, well, I can't say we all do, but I, I'm in the club. I'll put it that way. <laughs> um, okay. Since this is going out to Canada, you know, the, we've got some, we got more than just Toronto and Montreal and Vancouver. Um, well, I have a lot of American and international viewers, but if you would say, or can you name a Canadian uh, band uh, or singer or musician that was uh, an inspiration for you to grow up? Is there one? Besides um, Rush, besides what? Besides Rush, I get that every day. Well, I was gonna, I, I was gonna say Rush, so you just pulled <laughs> that out from under me. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Okay. Well, that's fair. If that was it, that was. But it. I'm gonna tell you, yeah, Canada um, has so much talent. I mean, I mean, comedic comedians. I mean, I don't know what it is, but so many of the best comedians seem to come from from Canada. W what's that about? You're right. Martin Short, Dan Aykroyd, yeah. John Candy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the list goes on and on. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe um, it's so cold up here. We just have to laugh to keep warm. I don't know. <laughs> well, it sure is great. Um, and hey, man, thanks for for chatting with me. And uh, no problem. And I hope no, one to get more question though. Sometime soon to. Oh yeah, what do you got? Um, okay, so what is the opposite of unsubscribe? Well, to subscribe. Okay, do as everybody, as Richie uh, Costin says, and subscribe to the channel so you get these great interviews. And once again, <laughs> <laughs> once again, Richie, I like that. Okay. Thanks for your time, bud. All right, brother. Talk to you later. Bye.